Hey, today with me, I have the founders of Internal. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Good Great to be here. Do you want to uh, give, give a brief introduction about who you are and what Internal is? Sure. Um, so I, I'm Marisa. Um, I am the uh, CEO, co-founder uh, of Internal. Uh, yeah, and I'm Bob Ramika, CTO, co-founder of Internal. Yep. Uh, and what Internal is, uh, it's a no-code uh, internal tools platform. Uh, we are designed for um, anybody in our company uh, to be able to build tools, whether or not you know SQL or code. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, so on, on your landing page, you, you mentioned like the third word is engineers. So do you, do you class it as a no-code tool for engineers? Is it more broad than that? Do you try and like target engineers first what's uh what's the back on there uh we actually are designed so that you don't have to be an engineer um our our users range we actually have um, a bunch of uh, engineering teams um using internal as well but actually you don't uh, we have people that are in product management or operations or just founders that aren't actually uh, engineers and know how to code um, and they also use internal as well awesome so what's the, what's the backstory of internal? Where did it come from? How long has it been around? Was it something else before it became internal? Um, well, I mean, so internal and I, or Marisa and I have been working at several companies together. Um, it was actually our fourth company together. And oh, wow. um, yeah, a long time ago, we started working at Yammer. Um, and we, we sort of realized that at every single company we had built um, an internal tool um, and, uh, they were always terrible. And so, um, we started thinking about, um, ways that, um, the reasons why they're terrible and ways that they could be better. And so that was really the genesis of it. Um, more recently, um, Arisa and I started a company called Harbor where we had built an admin console and we realized we basically built the same thing that we built at every other company. And so there was definitely a pattern. And so um, we just started thinking about, you know, what would be a way for us to do this so that we never had to build a, con build a console again? Because the issue was that we were always struggling with prioritizing engineering resources on our core product versus the um, internal tools. I mean, we never really wanted to work on internal tools. We always wanted to work on the core product. It's, so do you, <clears throat> do you use internal to bit to run internal then is that do you have a, the same absolutely yes um and what's <laughs> been awesome is that you know i actually don't have an engineering background and this is um one of, one of the reasons why we care so much about internal is because you know um as a product leader um we're always dependent at least in the past on engineering and figuring out how to staff engineering so that we can build these internal tools um but now um at, at our company because we use internal I'm building all the tools um, and it's, it's been awesome. I don't have to, you know, bother our engineers and pull them off of something else every time I need something. Um, and, and that's been really a game changer for us. Yeah. I think that's one of the main things, one of the main benefits I see of no code of previous working with previous companies saying, Oh, can I think at product time we had, there was a day every, every Friday for like any bug fixes or any like requests for the developers so that you weren't like annoying them in the week. Right. And then you'd always think, or you'd make friends with a, one or two of them, and just say, "Oh, do you, could you just like build this?" this little exactly. Thing? That, and I'm that sure is, you've hit that, <laughs> that is a thing. I mean, you, you're always as a non-engineer, you need these internal tools, right? And you're trying to figure out how to get engineers to squeeze it in because otherwise, it's just not going to get done. It's tough yeah. on engineering too because engineering yeah. doesn't want to not help you. Yeah, you know? I mean, engineers want to help. Um, at least the ones I've, I've been around, there's some stodgy. <laughs> Dodgy engineers out there for sure, but um, but generally, you know, people want to help. They're just slammed. You know, everybody's slammed. So, uh, what you're talking about is exactly the process. You know, it's it's you to to a non-technical person, it might seem like you're just adding a form field or you know, changing um, uh, something really simple, and it probably is. But the problem is, is that the engineering team, and if you're if you're at a tech company and you're doing it right, you're probably always blocked on engineering right? Um, it's just, they don't have time to prioritize 
your change because every single thing requires some sort of um, code change, code review, um, you know, deployment process. Uh, there's usually testing involved. Um, and, you know, it's actually a lot of work for some of these small changes, especially if you're going to do something that's well thought through. So the problem with a lot of these tools is that they look terrible because you don't typically have the same support that you would have on your customer facing product. Usually on your customer facing product, you have something like, you know, you have a designer, you have a product manager, you have an engineer, or maybe you have a team of engineers, maybe you have a team of these people, you know, bigger the project. Um, internal tools just never get that love. So, um, so these things that are, you know, really small, they just become these Frankenstein applications over time. And it, they're really hard to use, they're broken. Um, and it's typical. Um, this process is, is very typical. So, you know, doing something that should be easy, should be easy. And that's kind of one of the problems that internal solves. Yeah, I think, like you said, with for a non-technical person to say, oh, can you just add this form field? It's not just building that form field, like you said, there's everything that it is connected to, and every process that it's connected to. Right. And yeah, I've seen uh, like admin tools that are just very bare bones compared to what the front is. And yeah, I mean, no one's gonna prioritize that when the developer resource is so like needed on the important things on the front, I suppose. Um, a, a customer of ours, I'm not gonna name names, but describe their admin console as um, you know, MS-DOS. <laughs> it's just MS DOS, you know, it's that bad. Um, they're all like that though. It's very common. So would, so would a company who's, or, who's already got like this shitty looking admin panel come to it internal and be able to just like transfer stuff over? Or is it more of a, you got to, you start with internal or you just like transition over time. What's the, what's the usual process that you've seen with, with customers? Um, you, you start with internal. Um, however, we make it really easy. Um, so, and, and depending on the customer, you know, they will hook up their database. They may hook up their business applications. They may want to hook up to their existing company's APIs. Um, but let's just take the database example. Um, as soon as you hook up internal uh, to your database, um, a bunch of different tables and queries are just generated for you. So you don't have to write any SQL. Um, and all you have to do is drag in components, let's say um, uh, a table component, um, and choose your data and you're done. And actually, um, beyond that, um, internal actually spins up a bunch of these um, views for you as soon as you hook up to. So um, technically, you could be up and running um, and viewing all your data in your database in a matter of minutes. Okay, yeah, so that makes sense. So it's not necessarily like, oh, you've got to rebuild all your stuff from scratch, but in internal, it's more like component-based building and making it really quick. Yeah. What, um, what are some of the things that people have built? I mean, can people build stuff in internal and then you like have those as reusable components for other teams? Is that how some of these things have come up that like templates and things like that? Yeah, I mean, customers have, uh, you know, it's really a range, you know, I'm, internal is a platform, so you can kind of build anything. Um, now, the thing is, um, there are some internal tools that are pretty common. Um, we've seen uh, customers use it as sort of like a data entry type thing where you're mapping data from one system to another. Um, we've seen people use it as, um, you know, something that edits users for user management. Um, you know, some of the things that we use internal for ourselves is we built a mini CRM um, that hooks up with Salesforce and we kind of manage our lead process that way. Um, so the thing is, it's, it's a flexible platform, so you can really build whatever you want. But part of the, one of the hard parts about internal is sometimes getting people to understand what they can do. Um, and so I think it's good to be able to, you know, sort of give people sample applications so you can show them what they, what they can build. But the reality is they can really build anything that interacts with their data. And that's kind of how we started. Yeah, I think um, that's, the reason, oh. that's, sorry, that's, that's a really common thing in no code in general. The people don't know what they don't know. So everyone you've got to speak to, you've got to sort of say, you've got to mention a few different things to just get their brain working of thinking, oh, wait, yeah, I could do that myself, but for a slightly different thing. So people mention things like CRM, sales, marketing, um, right. stuff like that. A few other examples, um, you know, onboarding tools. 
Um, that, that's a common use case if you're onboarding a customer and you need to be able to you know, update their information in the back end in order to get them going. Um, that's a common use case. Um, uh, another interesting use case is like um, data cleansing and data mapping. So if you have um, you know, data in multiple different uh, databases even, um, and you need to kind of bring them together um, and make connections between uh, the two, um, that's another interesting uh, use case where, we're, where you are manipulating data. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, types of use cases. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm just thinking of, I think there's just, there's just so many things. And I think loads of these tools do offer, I mean, do like lots of things. How do you find, because people always say when you're doing a company to focus on the one thing is just, I suppose there's so many use cases here. Is just the one thing having people build internal tools. Is that like the one thing, but internal tools is very broad, I suppose, isn't it? It is broad. Oh, I think... Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> you go, you go. All right. So the, I mean, the, the, you're right. It's, it's, um, you know, the, there's like kind of two ways you can go about building, um, a company is you can focus on that, um, sort of like that initial use case and that wedge, and then you can also go broad. Um, and, um, you know, I think for a platform, you actually have to go broad. Um, now it, there is something to be said for having that starting point, right? So, you know, what is your, your niche? So, um, you know, is it, uh, maybe building a um, uh, sort of like a, a, a switch management tool or something like that for your your system. Um, that's certainly possible with internal. Um, generally, uh, though, we are a platform, so you can build whatever you want. And and the reason why we're we're tackling this is because Bob and I have felt this pain and have experienced this pain over and over and over again at, at so many companies. Um, and so we want to figure out a way to solve this problem where internal tools are always just on your engineering team. Um, and it's, it's always blocked on engineering and non-technical teams can't do anything about it. Um, and so um, that's why we're, we're going with this platform approach. Yeah, I mean, just, just a little bit of backstory on this too. You know, I mean, a uh, reason I both worked at a company called Zenefits and, um, you know, uh, that, that's where we saw um, the, the need for internal tooling because Zenefits grew so quickly. You know, it grew from like, I think I was employee 400 or something like that to 1800 and like, you know, I don't know, two days or something like that. It was really fast. <laughs> um, so, um, so anyway, we, we, had a, we had an internal tool, we called it console and, um, and, uh, you know, it just didn't scale as fast as the company did. And, um, you know, it was, it was a constant tug of war between um, whether or not we could um, allocate resources on internal tools because we had a really large operations team versus build our core product. And they were always at odds with each other. And unfortunately, the, the internal tools always suffered. Um, at one point, we had to really address the problem. And because the tool is just falling over. So we reallocated a ton of resources. I think at our height, Zenefits had a, an engineering team of like 200 plus engineers. And we took like, let's call it at least 10% of those engineers and allocated them towards internal tools. What could those in, engineers have been building in the meantime? You know, what kind of um, forward looking opportunities could we have attacked in the meantime? You know, the cost, the cost of not uh, the cost of building the internal tool probably costs us exponentially in actual um, uh, growth and, and company um, opportunities. So, um, you know, that was sort of like one of the, the big um, aha moments. I'd say the other aha moment was with, um, you know, Harbor, and we just realized we had to build this, this deep console so that we could have, um, you know, remain compliant. And Harbor was a, a, a financial services company that, um, interrupt with the blockchain. So um, we had this um, big compliance team that had to go in and review documents all the time and sort of make updates. And we actually had to work with outside contractors, but we never wanted to give data uh, access to these contractors to our internal console. So we had all these issues with building our own console. And, and honestly, um, I didn't think it was all that unique. You know, the, the console that we built in house was sort of like, um, allowed you to sort of navigate through your database. We had some custom tools um, and we had some, the ability for people to go in and sort of manage their tasks. 
And, um, and that's kind of where we saw this pattern. We also had this need to um, allow people externally to, to see our data, but of course we didn't want them to see all the data. And so that was really hard and we had to jump through a lot of hoops to get that done. And so we took all this experience that we had from, you know, I think I've been in this industry, uh, you know, technology 20 plus years at this point. And um, Arisa has been in for a really long time as well. Um, I, uh, we just kind of put our heads together and brainstorm, you know, what would a, a really good console look like? What does it actually have to do? And um, how can we put some controls in place so that, um, you know, you didn't have this problem with, um, you know, everybody having access to all the data uh, all at once. Yeah. Well, it seems like it's quite an easy picture to paint for a company to say, I mean, I even said it earlier saying, oh, well, can a developer just like, can you just squeeze this project in this week to help me do X? That must be like, do you find that it's quite easy to, I suppose, yeah, I suppose sell it to a company and just say like, have you ever been in this situation? Every company says yes. <laughs> and then you say, well, it's right. internal. I mean, every company has experienced this issue. Um, if they're an existing or a larger team, um, if they are a startup, um, they just feel this pain all the time because they're just trying to get their product out um, and their customer facing product out. They don't want to spend any engineering resources yeah. um, on, on any internal tools. And that's something, you know, at, at our company, so we use internal. Um, and, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, is a big challenge for us all the time as a company is prioritizing and, you know, getting as much moving as fast as possible and getting as many features out to our customers um, as possible. And if we had to also squeeze in all the internal tools that, you know, I need and, and our, you know, business side needs, um, that would um, definitely uh, take up um, a, a lot more of the engineering resourcing. Are you finding that as you're onboarding more customers and using internal internally, that you're seeing ways to add things yourself and think, oh, that would be like, I wish this was added in our internal tool, but let's add this as a feature or let's add this as a component. Are you sort of dog fooding in a very big way, I suppose? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's one of the, the great benefits of dog fooding is, um, you know, when you're using our own product and you're, you're one of the, the customers, um, you're, you're always finding things. Um, oh, I wish I, this, this happened. Or like, I wish that this, you know, feature did this, right? Um, and you got to add that to the roadmap. Um, our, our roadmap is massive. <laughs> what are some of the most recent uh, features and things that uh, customers have requested and, and you've, you've shipped? Um, the, one of the most recent ones that we shipped, I would say is the, um, uh, being able to, uh, filter the data that is in your application based off of the logged in user. Um, that's something that, um, we've, we've been requested, um, or that's been requested a lot. Um, so, uh, what that means is, okay, you have an app and, you know, Bob, the you know, engineer logs in and looks at the app. What, is his, what does he see versus like me, um, the product manager, what do I see in the, in, in the app? Um, and you'll be able to um, actually control that. And this, the, the use case is actually more relevant to, let's say like sales teams or account managers. So usually you have like um, accounts for, for customers assigned to you, right? And so if you log into an app, you can just see the list of customers that you're assigned to so that you don't have to see the full list. Yeah. Can you, have you seen anyone using this for more um, front facing apps? Like thinking of that example, you, could you have like members, members seeing certain types of data and then everyone else not seeing like specific levels of that or, or similar? Um, we do get a lot of requests actually um, to use internal more as a customer facing app or a, a partner facing app. Um, that is something that you could do, um, but it's not something that we have optimized or focused on uh, so far. Yeah. We're like pretty focused on the internal tools uh, use case and making sure that um, that is successful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Talking about it and seeing, seeing the products and stuff, it makes me just think, especially for building something with no code. I'm like, Oh, actually this could solve 
so much of the like logged in dashboard side of things where no code doesn't really solve that for a, for a lot of people right now. Um, right. But yeah, obviously it's, it's one thing at a time, I guess. Yep. <laughs> one thing at a time. Um, did you purposefully choose this like no code route? Was it, were you doing, do you call yourselves no code or do you just happen to call yourselves no code? Uh, we our, our mentality is no code first. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really important to us. So, you know, um, background again, like we feel that, you know, the, the core problem with internal tools is that it's always on engineering. Um, and nobody else can actually build or maintain your internal tools. Um, and that's the problem that we're trying to solve. So we want to make sure that the platform is something where a non-technical person who doesn't know code, maybe doesn't even know SQL, uh, can come in and actually uh, build or you know, fix tools or do what they need to do. Um, with that said, and, and I'm sure Bob can um, chime in more about this, um, but uh, companies, engineering teams, uh, need robust capabilities, need to be able to hook into their existing APIs, uh, for example, in their existing business logic. Um, and so um, we, of course, support um, that aspect too. So we, we like to think of ourselves as no code first, but with all the capabilities of um, uh, other more power, uh, other powerful platforms. Yeah, the, the other thing I, I think I'd just add to that is that, you know, there is like this no code movement and we started before that, you know, the, the, the whole thing, um, but but core to our, our value prop has always been offloading the work of engineering onto teams that can do the work. Um, they can basically maintain their um, applications themselves. That has been from day one um, where we saw value, right? So like, it, it is one thing to help accelerate engineers um, to do their job faster, that is one thing. Um, but I think that doesn't really solve the whole problem. The, the whole problem is, that you need to be able to um, remove engineering from that process. And you're not gonna remove engineering completely. Um, and we'd be naive to think that you could, right? Because at the end of the day, you still have you know, APIs you've got to hook up, you've still got you know, database and some of these things are technical and you're just unavoidable that you have to drop on the code. Um, when you have to do that with internal, you can, but it's not what we lead with, like Arisa said, it's, it's what, we're, what we present to somebody is not like an IDE. What we present to somebody is something that's friendly and approachable and helps you feel like you're not gonna mess things up. And that's kind of like the approach that we've always had from the beginning. Um, and it's great that this no code thing is happening because I see that you know, the tools are getting better across the board you know, and people are having more options. And, and at the end of the day, this is gonna translate into um, I can just do my job as an engineer, <laughs> um, which I, I always feel like people come to uh, some sort of company, they want to work on a core product, they don't want to build internal tools, you usually give that to the intern or something like that, you know, yeah. so, um, so that's where we see the value. Do you think it's been um, a slower adoption from engineers in this whole no code movement? Do you think I mean, I've seen some sides of it where it's like people think you've got to take sides or it's like one or the other, but I think something like internal and even there's plenty of tools out there that aren't no code. They may be no code first, even by, by accident. They just happen to not have to use code, but you can eventually. Um, so there's a lot of like gray area here as well. I think there that's, I think, good for this whole movement in general. But I wonder if you've seen yeah, engineers be a bit more standoffish with, with no code. I mean, I, I'd probably say like 10 years ago, I would have been like that, you know? Um, I, I think that the, there, there is a healthy skepticism from engineering because um, as an engineer, you kind of understand how these things are all put together and you, you, um, you know, you kind of think like, well, how could one, um, you know, gooey WYSIWYG um, type tool accommodate all these edge cases. And I think that skepticism is, is right. I think the, the thing is though, is that you don't need to handle those. Um, it's not that you don't need to handle those, but those patterns are established. So um, when something is easy to build and kind of well-known, um, you shouldn't need to um, need a programming language to, to build that. You shouldn't need an engineer to build that. 
those are the cases that we handle really well on our platform. But of course, of course, there's going to be times where you need to drop in the code. There's, of course, there's going to be times where you need to customize. You need to go a little bit further than what um, a, a tool can reasonably support. And that's you know, a big part of internal as well. And we have um, you know, these um, pieces of the product where you can drop in the code, but we don't lead with that. And that's, and that's kind of the point. Yeah, I think a lot of, I see that happening a lot where people are using the product and maybe pushing the limits or like just getting really advanced right. and relying on it a lot and then seeing all these smaller things it's like just need a little bit more but then because they're so used to how the product works they actually can understand or recognize oh that's the database there or that's the api like i can i now can almost touch and do stuff with apis that i would never have known before using something like zapier for example so right it's it's sort of the no code pushes you into okay here's the basics that you like can recognize with drag and drop and, and clicking things around. And then, yeah, when you get into more, that more advanced level, you can dip your toe in a bit and then maybe mess up a few fair few times before it gets right. But no, I think it's good. I think, I think one of the things that engineers tend to underestimate um, is just really simple things like syntax. Syntax for people that don't write code on a, you know, a daily basis is actually really hard. And, um, and it's not that the, the thinking about the problem is, I mean, thinking about the problem is hard too. I think sometimes you, you have to have like a technical mind, but there's just a barriers to entry along the way, syntax, compiling, uh, building, deploying, you know, all these things that people, um, you know, engineers, I think kind of take for granted um, because it's just baked into their daily workflow. Um, but these are all things that, um, that people that aren't programmers would need to learn if they wanted to build tools with code. And so what we've done is we've just taken all of that away, basically, um, for somebody that doesn't, isn't a programmer on a daily basis. Maybe they're technical. Maybe they are a spreadsheet wizard or something like that. Um, for people like that, internal is a great platform because you don't have to worry about all this barrier to entry stuff. You can just come in and start working and everything just kind of works how you would expect. Um, now on the engineering side, you know, I think um, engineers are skeptical, but what I'm seeing is engineers starting to come around. You yeah. know, um, I think engineers themselves are realizing, oh my gosh, it's so great that I don't actually have to worry about this, you know, stupid admin console anymore that I hate working on because it's slow and it looks like crap, you know, um, and I can just rely on this platform. Um, it lets me get in where I need to, but it takes away all the things I hate doing, building a UI, thinking it through, um, you know, hooking, um, you know, writing uh, glue code, um, you know, understand, uh, trying to, um, you know, write, uh, write code that understands the relationship to your database. And it's just, it's just boilerplate. I mean, it really is. It's just, let's get rid of the boilerplate. Let's give you the areas that you really need to focus on as an engineer, which is like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define an input and that's going to hook up into my API here and I'm out. And that's all I do. That's the way we use internal internally. Um, so, you know, Arisa, uh, what I tend to do is um, we have an API or something that, you know, maybe modifies a user record. Um, and so I'll just configure that. And then from that point on, I'm out of it. Arisa is building the tool herself. Um, and so that's kind of how internal works. It's really based on how, um, you know, I think uh, these, these applications should be built. You know, you shouldn't be blocked on engineering for adding something like a form field. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, that's the point that we try and make a lot of the time is surely everyone wants to just get rid of the repetitive stuff or stuff that you have to like redo every time in the same way that's not the interesting pieces. It's right. like, let's get to the more interesting things faster um that way what um what do you think you'd both be doing or working on what what would be a different company if internal existed today and you two had to do something it seems like you've done quite a few things already so what what, what was what's on the list 
What would it be? I don't like? know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't sure where this was going. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I might be like mining cryptocurrency or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so what, what is the question? Uh, what would we be doing? If, what would we be doing if internal already existed so we wouldn't have to build internal tools anymore? Oh, um, I mean, personally, I probably would have been a lot more productive <laughs> at the companies that I've been at. You know, I mean, I, I think, um, yeah, I, 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 I've never liked working on consoles. Um, it's just kind of ironic that that is my full-time job now. Um, uh, but, you know, I think the, the approach is a little bit different because we're trying to build a console so you don't ever have to build a console before. And that feels like somewhat of a noble quest. Um, but the, uh, uh, what would I be doing if I, I don't know, I just have a lot more time. I'd probably um, play with my kids more. <laughs> I'm not sure. What about you, Arisa? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's so much to build with internal that it just, I, I haven't really thought about that. Um, I'd have to get back to you on it. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I guess feeling like building something like internal then probably makes you feel like you can, you're can you building smaller tools within internal all the time, right? So it's like scratching that building itch probably over and over and over every week. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 tweaking or building new tools all the time. In yeah. Internal. Awesome. What do you guys both think of where no code is going and where internal also might be going with like with the rise of this whole no code movement? Uh, it, I think it's 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 so I think it's still so early um, that I, I I don't exactly know where where no code is is going. Um, you know, it, it's very clear that um, there are an increasing number of um, you know uh, platforms that are popping up that really give um, non technical teams uh, more and more power to do um, a, a lot of things. Um, so we don't know, but um, when it comes to no code for internal tools. Um, obviously, we, we believe that um, that is something uh, that, you know, in, in the um, coming years, um, more and more companies are just not going to choose to build their internal tools. Um, they are going to pass on that responsibility mostly to their non-technical teams and, and fully embrace it. What do you think the barrier is today with getting the non-technical team to, like, start taking this on as as something that they they can do themselves because a lot of it seems to be education of you can do this yeah Other absolutely times, yeah it's just yeah kind of cool. i think a lot of times um, because in the past internal tools it's always been something that you know engineering it, it's on the engineering side engineering builds internal tools um the non-technical teams think that they have no ability to build these things um, and so it's, it's really about educating them to say, hey, actually, um, there are platforms out there that will allow you uh, to build these internal tools yourself um, and um, maintain it. Um, so it's, it's, it's really an educational thing. Yeah, I agree. Is there anything else you uh, have thoughts on in, in the no code space? Otherwise, we'll, uh, we can wrap it up there. Bob, you got anything? Um... I mean, I guess what I would say is just, um, I, I, I'd encourage people to take a look. Um, at, you know, maybe you um, were, maybe you're a, a, not an engineer, maybe you're semi-technical or technical, but not an engineer. Um, you looked at some of these tools and you went, uh, I don't get it. Or uh, like the, the tool is, it looks like it's for programmers and I don't understand. And um, I think I would encourage people to take another look um, at this stuff, um, because it's getting better all the time. Um, and our platform is, um, in particular is, uh, it's always improving. So, um, you know, I would just encourage people to, to maybe if you've looked at it and been intimidated, don't be intimidated. Um, you know, and then also, um, in, for internal in particular, you know, we're always happy to, to talk to people and sort of walk them through and get them um, comfortable with, uh, with the tool. And so the support is really there. Um, you know, I, I think it's great actually that people are starting to pick up um, these, uh, these no code tools. And, um, and I think, um, you know, it's just better for, for everything. So um, take a look at it. Um, 
I would say check out internal for sure. Um, and uh, we're happy to talk to you and walk you through it. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you both coming on. Um, why don't you let the folks know where they can find you and internal? Uh, just go to internal.io um, and, uh, and you'll find us. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. This is fun. Right. Thanks, Ben.